So now we're going to watch these two videos. Okay, so first we'll watch simulation one. So notice that they're taking the beads from these four cups of populations from both low, mid, and high. They're putting them in a bigger cup, they're shaking them, and this is simulating reproduction, right? A random, a random reproduction. They dump them back into the cups. Then they allow the other ones to reproduce, essentially, right? Put them back in the cups. Then you go through and you take out 10 beads, 10 alleles from each po population, from each cup, and you put it, and these ones are then transferred from both the mid and the high back down into the low cups. Because remember, the low cups had lost most of the population because of this algae, and so now there's available, available terrain for the mid and high snails to migrate down into the low level area. So now we'll do a simulation two where we're going to basically allow the same type of thing to occur once again. So we take the snails from all three populations, we allow them to reproduce, pour them back in to the population, so now we have a random distribution again. Then we take samples from both mid and high, they migrate down into the low, and that way we are repopulating the low because the mid and high were able to migrate down into that area. So we first get all of these beads out, 10 beads per cup, and put them down into the other cups. All right, so we um, just saw now that this simulation happened, and here are the end results. So in each of these four cups, we, have, we can go in and count the beads, right? We had 18 white and 36 yellow, 12 and 33, 15 and 32. And if we take the average of those four um, cups of beads of the po entire population here, we see that now yellow is, is occurring at 68.5% of, uh, of the time and white at 31.5% of the time. So there's been a change, right? Well, what happened in the mid and high? Well, it turns out that the mid and high during these simulations really didn't change. The average is still about 85% white or yellow and 15% white for the mid zone and about 90 to 10 for the high zone. So how can we explain this? Well, this is what we call gene flow. The fact that individuals from the mid and high zones were gradually moving their way down into the low zone and then populating the, the, you know, the rocks that could be inhabited in that zone and the reason there was uh, there were there was room to be inhabited remember is because that that algal that toxic algal bloom you know killed off the majority of the low living snails the low tide snails and so there was room for these other snails to kind of move down and live in the, and they can live okay in the lower tide they they just as they could up above they do okay and so they came down and they're living there and and you see a change then in allele frequency, where we're now we have many more yellows than whites than we did before. And the explanation for this is the evolutionary mechanism of gene flow. We also sometimes refer to this as migration or immigration. So now let's um, look at another move in allele frequency, another change in allele frequency. And to do this, I need to, I need to talk about these two um, alleles in a little bit more about what their biology is. So the 120 enzyme, which is our yellow bead allele, actually is more heat stable. And so snails that have this allele, on average, are a little bit better at surviving in warmer temperatures and drier temperatures, so higher up, right, on, in the tidal zones. And snails that happen to have more of the 100 um, enzyme or white bead allele happen to be a little bit better at surviving in underwater situations, right? So it's not a surprise, right, that in our original populations, the ones that are in the mid and high, they had more yellow beads, and the ones in the water, uh, in the in the low tide zone, that they had more white beads, right? That doesn't that that's not a surprise. So let's come back though to this population that has just gone through this gene flow. Well, it went through a genetic drift event, right? That bottleneck population reduction. Then we had gene flow where individuals came down, and now we're sitting at a yellow population, a yellow allele frequency of 68.5 and a white allele frequency of 31.5. Well, if we were to track this population over time, we would probably see a change something like this, where pretty soon, where not 
too many generations down the road, you would see this population revert back to a 10% yellow and a 90% white. Now, how can we explain this change back to kind of the original situation? Well, this is where we can now invoke the mechanism that we've already learned about before, natural selection. Because individuals that have the white 100 enzyme allele are better at surviving underwater, you would expect that from this population, those that have the white beads on average are going to survive better than those that have the yellow beads and therefore reproduce more. And their offspring are going to carry forward those more white beads. And so gradually you'll see a change back to kind of that original condition of 10% yellow, 90% white. Let's also now imagine a situation where some of these snails live close to um, Fukushima, Japan, where that tsunami occurred. And let's say that scientists come back in 2021 and they look at the population and they look and they count the allele frequency of the 120 allele, the 100 allele, but they notice that there's a different allele as well, a new allele. And these are the numbers. So in the high tide zone, it's still 10%, 90%. In the mid zone, it's 83, 14, but there's 3% of this new allele. But in the low tide zone, there's only 5% of the 120 allele, 70% of the 100 allele, or the white allele, but this new allele is, is present in 25% of the organisms, of the individuals. Well, how can we explain this, right? Or what is it that causes this new allele to occur? Well, this is another evolutionary mechanism that can cause a change in allele frequency over time called mutation. And mutation is simply a change in the DNA code right, in the DNA of the organism. And that change in the code sometimes causes changes in what that DNA is, is supposed to do. In this case, it's an enzyme. And an enzyme is a protein. And a protein has three-dimensional structure. And changes in the DNA code can cause that protein to have a slightly different three-dimensional structure. So now this enzyme might be able to behave in a slightly different way. And so probably, in this case, given that with you know, these, these made-up numbers here, you probably had a change in either the yellow or the white allele, um, you know, so their DNA code, somehow got a mutation on it where it changed it. And now, you know, I'm so now representing it as an orange bead. But essentially, the DNA is slightly changed so that now this protein, this enzyme, behaves in a slightly different way. Most likely, it's giving some advantage, again, to an underwater snail. And so as natural selection looks at this and sees that, maybe it's even more advantageous than the white, right? Or, or at least it's advantageous like having a white, but it's better than being yellow. And so it's not a surprise to see now that you see a 25% presence you know, of this new allele. So then that brings us to the end of this lecture where we can see that we have seen allele frequencies change over time due to natural selection, due to mutation, genetic drift, gene flow, and we didn't talk much about non-random mating, but in the Amish of Pennsylvania, they tended to, to mate with themselves. That's called inbreeding. And inbreeding can also cause a change in allele frequency over time. And if you remember, these were also the five assumptions of Hardy-Weinberg, that no natural selection is occurring, no mutation is occurring, no genetic drift is occurring, no gene flow is occurring, and that the populations are randomly mating. Well, it turns out then that the Hardy-Weinberg is really the null model. It's the, the situation that you would assume where nothing is happening, no evolution is happening. And so what we can do in the real world is go out and measure allele frequencies and track them through time. And if the allele frequencies are changing, then we know that one of the five mechanisms, or more than one of the five mechanisms, is actually having a play in that population, right? And we've even got it down to this in, the, in population genetics, which is a, 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 an upper division um, you know, class that you, you might have to take at some point. But it, it's where we can actually tease out how much of the change is due to natural selection, or how much is due to genetic drift, or how much is due to mutation. We can actually tease out evolution happening at that level. And so this is clear. We know that evolution happens in all populations, because we can track it. We can watch it, and we can see it happen.